what are some things that that work for you in your practice that help you align yourself or you know just for some in in terms of beginners what are the chakras how powerful are they um, and how can people better create harmony within themselves uh, to begin with let's understand that uh, in the vedic tradition we talk of every being not just being made of a physical body but there's also an energy body right which is called the sukshma sharira in sanskrit and it is here in the energy body that the chakras come into play now what are the chakras the sanskrit word chakra actually means a wheel or a spinning disk and to understand chakras we have to understand the concept of prana prana is the vital energy the vital life force which, which is also in in the chinese uh, tradition it's called qi qi you know all these uh, terms and i think every tradition every uh, civilization has their own version of energies but in the indian system we talk of these uh, energies called the prana which traverse through your entire energy body and they travel through the entire energy body through channels called nadis so nadi the sanskrit uh, word nadi means a stream which carries these energies so wherever the nadis merge into what are called plexuses in a biological way is where you will find the chakras so in the hindu tradition we are told that there are 72000 nadis and 114 chakras out of which 112 lie within the energy body and two outside but for simplicity and uh, to enable a meditation and to bring about a balance the seven chakras are generally spoken about so the chakras the seven chakras they start at the base of your spine and end at the top of your head so starting from the muladhara all the way up to the sahasrara chakra now uh, one very interesting aspect which i have to point out is also that in the indian tradition this is known as the kundalini shakti so we see the kundalini as the coiled serpent which is lying at the base of our spine and it needs to move upward which is why any time you are in meditation you are told sit up straight with your spine you know upright and erect so that the energy can move from the base of your spine all the way to the top of your head and then merge with the universal consciousness so the kundalini is that dormant energy which needs to traverse through all the chakras and then emerge at the top at which point you will be talk of enlightenment or moksha nirvana liberation call it what you want but that's the concept so this is the basis of the chakras but to give you a very simple analogy mm. you have a house there are several electrical wires running through the house right and yeah. it's only at certain points where you have the switches that you can moderate or regulate these energies for example if you want to turn on a light there's a switch that you go to i would reckon that these seven chakras are similar to these switches so that's the analogy of the lights with the chakras it, i i i i love the way you said cuz i never thought about it in in that term but that makes so much sense the way you explained you know the the kundalini energy, energy traveling upwards because that makes sense whereas if one of your chakra one of your chakras is blocked right that means that that energy can't fully uh go up right so exactly so in terms of like opening some of your your chakras um it, it, are there practices that people can use that work well in terms of through meditation i know you know in some of the guided ones i've done it talks about breathing into them and imagining the light going into them but are there things that you use that you find helps open up certain ones that are blocked before answering that question i want to explain why it's important to unblock the chakras and keep the energies flowing yeah because this is a very common question people ask why should the chakras be clear and balanced now the thing is that every single experience we have as a human being gets imprinted at our energy level 
to some extent also at our cellular level in the physical body, but more so in the energy level. So say, for example, you've had a traumatic experience as a three-year-old that is imprinted. If you have had struggles as a teenager, that is imprinted. So all of it is cumulative in effect. And there are certain places where all these negativities come together and create a block. Now, for example, in a pipe, okay, a pipe which is carrying water, yeah. a certain uh, portion of it is blocked. So what happens is pressure builds up above or below it. In a similar fashion, in the chakras, if, for example, you have a blockage in the heart chakra, the adjacent chakra, say, for example, the Vishuddha chakra becomes overactive. So if your heart chakra is blocked and you're not allowing love to flow in, you're not compassionate, then that shows up as anger issues. Mm. You know, you, you are, you're loud and you're aggressive. So it's important to ensure that all the chakras are open, okay. balanced and doing their job so that you can resonate at a higher frequency as an individual, as an energy system. So that then you can connect with the quantum field. Mm. You can then resonate at a higher, you know, physical state of well-being, at a state of um, point where you can manifest whatever it is that you desire without great difficulty. Because then you're in direct, you know, consonance and resonance with the quantum field. So that is the reason why the chakras need to be balanced. That's really interesting. I, I, I love the thought of each one affecting the next. So like, Absolutely. it's not just because, because I think a lot of the times we think of each, each one is operating separately where, oh, my heart is blocked a bit. Okay, maybe I'm not able to love unconditionally or be as compassionate. But the way you said, no, it actually comes out in your speech because it goes up to your throat chakra, which also means you're probably not able to think clearly and your, your vision is clouded. And so it, it's, it's, it, we, we can't take each any of them for granted almost. No. And you shouldn't take them literally in that sense. Because even though uh, a lot of people ask, you know, how is it physically? How does it work? What you have to understand is that where your attention goes, energy flows. So even if at a, you don't, be, let's assume for a moment that there are people who don't believe in this whole system of energy. They say it's your physical body and that's all there is to it. And the day we stop breathing, we go and our body perishes. It's understandable. And I totally acknowledge that such thoughts exist, which is perfectly fine. But I want to say to them as well, that when you take your attention to a particular part of your body, you are doing some healing there because you are giving it some positive energy. So don't worry too much about, you know, just the energy body, even at a physical level. It helps to just meditate on the various parts because if you observe these seven energy centers that we are talking about are really powerful. We are talking about plexuses. We are talking about major glands. For example, the heart, it regulates the thymus gland, the Manipura chakra, that's the stomach chakra, regulates your pancreas and the Agnya chakra regulates your pineal gland. So if you do not believe in energies, that's perfectly fine. At least meditate, pay attention, take your attention to these parts so that they can heal at a cellular level. 